All right, guys, so we're starting with uh, video 2.2, and we're going to, in this section, look at um, kind of reviewing uh, velocity versus time graphs and position versus time graphs and tying it into motion maps as well. So uh, in this one, uh, there is a motion map that's given to you. It's really basic. Um, there's a dot here um, that is the first dot, where it's a start and end. So uh, where it starts, it's at zero meters, and it's going to the right. Uh, so this would be zero seconds as well. So uh, just to kind of put in some... Uh, time scale just so we can count better. So this would be zero seconds. So this would be one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like uh, this object is moving for five seconds and it looks like it's moving uniformly. And the re reason why I can say that it looks like the space between the dots is the same. So if I was describing this motion, uh, I just start from where it starts to where it ends and kind of describe the time interval. So um, I have it as uh, the object moves from 0 to 10, positive 10 meters, from 0 to 5 seconds. Again, the positive here just means that it moved in the positive direction. If this was slipped over, it would move in the negative direction. That's fine. Um, so we're going to represent this motion with a quantitative uh, position versus time graph. So um, I'm going to make some dots. This is position and time. And we need to have a scale that at least goes up to 10 on the position and meters. So, um, so again, on your graphs, this looks like it would be 0. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I'm going to count by twos uh, just so everybody can see it. And you don't have to label all of them if you, as long as you have it equally spaced. Oops. That should be 6 and then 8. And then my time scale, I need to go from 0 seconds uh, to 5. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 seconds. And all we're going to do is we're going to place these uh, dots again on here. So I'm going to use a different symbol uh, to help put this on better. So um, at 0, 0. Okay, so it's there. Uh, 0, 0 is the first one. Then at 1 second, so that 2. 2 seconds at 4. 4 seconds at 6. I'm oh, sorry, 3 seconds at 6. 4 seconds at 8. And then 5 seconds at 10. Uh, so we have our line, and uh, it looks like our line is going like that. Um, so we've represented uh, this motion, so a slope of this line would be the velocity, so it looks like if I went from 0 up to 10, and then this adds up gain of 10 uh, meters, and we're dividing that by 5 seconds of time, that would be a positive 2. So uh, I got a velocity of positive 2 uh, meters per second for that entire time period, um, which makes sense. So like when we tracked it on this uh, graph up here, it looks like it's moving 2 meters every second that goes by. So every dot happens 2 meters to the right of the one previous dot, and it looks like 1 second of time is the interval that we are measuring here. So um, because it's going at a uh, uniform constant rate, when we draw this out um, for our... Uh, for our velocity versus time graph, um, it is going to be um, at that same thing the entire time. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to stop at five because I didn't go past that dot. Um, and again, same kind of labels on uh, the time axis. So whoops, that's supposed to be not a snowflake. So one, two, three, four. Five seconds of time, uh, zero seconds of time. This is zero, zero, the origin. Uh, that'd be zero meters per second. That'd be one meters per second. That'd be two. And these are positive, so it's going to the right on these. So we've we've done that um, calculation and figured all that out. So um, there are a couple questions. It says write a mathematical expression that represents the relationship between position and time. Um, so uh, if we look at this graph, um, we have x as a function of t, and um, the velocity times the time will get you to displacement. We kind of did that with uh, the slope of this line is velocity equals displacement over time. We've done that before with the slope of the line. So if we solve for um, displacement or position, um, it's, it's showing you that. And uh, we could rewrite this as um, the displacement is equal to uh, our velocity value, which is positive 2, times whatever time interval we're talking about. So uh, if we plugged in numbers, if we put in 0 here, we get 0. If we put in 1, we get 2. If we put in 2, we get 4. 3, we get 6. 4, we get 8. And 5, we get 10. So it, it matches up with our graph nicely in that that is the expression for this line. Um, from the position versus time graph, we're supposed to find the displacement uh, from 1 
to three seconds. So um, from one to three seconds, we're just looking for the change in position. So this is our final position here at three seconds. And this is our initial position at one second. So uh, displacement here, it would be this location, which is positive six. Six. And we're going to subtract off the initial position, which was two. So uh, six minus two is a positive four. So we moved four meters to the right in that time interval. And that checks out because it went from two up to six. We could also plug in two here, and two times two gets you four. So all of those things are working uh, together in unison. Uh, it says from the air or from the area under the curve, calculate the um, graph or the <laughs> from the area under the curve under the velocity versus time graph. Uh, from time one to three seconds, um, we want to calculate what that area represents. And we did this before, and this is just again from one to three seconds. So we're finding that red area that I'm kind of coloring in here. Um, so it's from the line going down to the axis and you stop at this horizontal zero. So um, we would do um, two by two. So it'd be uh, two meters per second, positive two meters per second because it's above the zero, so it's positive. So positive two meters per second times two seconds which is equal to a positive four meters, which is all working together. So all of these graphs um, seem to check out. We've done everything properly so that um, they all match up and, and fit together. Okay, um, let's jump to the next one. So uh, sometimes I'll just give you data and you'll have to make a graph. So hopefully you can plot points, okay, and they're scaled already here. And then we're gonna use the information on this uh, position versus time graph to calculate the velocity versus time, and then we're going to draw a motion map. Um, there are some questions at the end after this. Uh, I'm going to skip question F because that'll confuse you, and I don't do that on a test later, but um, the other ideas I think you should be okay with, uh, so we'll we'll try to figure those out. So um, first off, let's just uh, plot these points. So zero, zero, so I'm using a red dot. Uh, I'm at time equal to one. I'm at position two. Uh, and then I'm at uh, time equal to two seconds. I'm at four. Then at three, I'm still at four. Um, at four, I'm at seven, so five, six, seven. Um, at position time five, I'm at position 10. Then I stay at 10 for the next three seconds, so that's at seven seconds. Eight seconds, I'm down at five. Nine seconds, I'm down to zero. Okay, so um, I need to kind of connect these points, so I'm going to do that with uh, the line drawing tool. So that's the first one, that section, and uh, stops, then it goes up. Oh, don't know what happened there. Let me get rid of that. Then it's stopped again up at 10, and then it goes from 10 all the way back down to uh, 0. So that's the, the general shape of the graph that you should um, have displayed. And um, we're going to uh, calculate velocities from this. So again, velocity, um, the velocity for the time interval is equal to uh, the change in its the change in position divided by the change in time. So let me whoops, put that back. There we go. So oh, I spelled change wrong as well. And um, change of position over change of time, that is equal to the slope on the position versus time graph. So we're just going to calculate slopes here. So the first slope we want to do, we want to do the rise over the run. So it looks like this line goes up 4 and 2. So 4 divided by 2 is a positive 2, because it's a positive displacement. So um, for the first uh, amount of time, for the first two seconds, we're at positive 2. Um, and then uh, the next on this section from three, 2 to 3 seconds, uh, there is no velocity, so I'm just going to put a line at 0. And then uh, from here, it goes from 4 up to 10, so that's a gain of 6, and we're going to divide that by 2, so that's a positive 3. 
And that looks like uh, that's from three to five. Then um, we're back where we have stopped again. We're at the same location, so from five to seven, uh, and back at zero. And then finally, from uh, seven to nine, it drops ten. So that's uh, negative ten divided by two, which is going to be a negative five. So this is the uh, lines uh, that represent the constant velocities that we have. So it just jumps from one constant velocity to another constant velocity to another. Um, if we drew the motion map, we can we can hopefully do that as well. So let me get a different pen. So at zero, it's at zero. Then at one second, it's at two. So I, I'm going to count by twos here. I didn't do that, but I should scale it first. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Getting back to the creative pen. Whoops, no, nope. creative pen. So at zero, it's at zero. At one, it's at two. At two, it's at four. At three, it's at four. Um, at four, it's at seven. Oh, I don't know why I wrote five. Let's change that to an eight. Um, then um, I am, uh, so I was at seven. Uh, at So zero, one, two, three, four. 5, I'm at 10, 6, I'm at 10, 7, I'm at 10, um, 8 seconds, I'm at 5, so 5 is halfway between the 4 and the 6, and then at 9 seconds, I'm at 0. So kind of drawing those in, it looks like it goes from there to there, and there to there. That's the first 2 seconds. Then it stays, uh, and then it moves again. And it's going faster because the arrows or the space between the uh, the snowflakes got bigger. Then this is all staying at the same location. Then it moves to the left, and it's going the fastest, coming back to the left um, for the last two seconds of the motion from seven to nine. So, um, so that is all uh, expressed in this graph. Right. So um, determining the displacement using a velocity versus time graph from three to five. That's here. So again, we did this before. It's just the uh, it's just the area of the rectangle there. So we're trying to figure that out. So uh, this looks like it's 3 by 2. So that's going to be 6 meters, positive 6. Yep. Um, then uh, for the next one, it says determine the displacement from 7 to 9. So 7 to 9 would be here, that area. <coughs> and that's negative 5 by 2, so that's a negative 10. So, um, so this one here. Uh, is a positive six meters because it's three by two. Sorry, trying to move it to make it fit in this box. There we go. And uh, this one here. When it's underneath, uh, that's a negative velocity, so that means it's moving to the left, and that one is going to be a negative 10. So those are just some basic ideas with uh, motion maps and position versus time graphs and um, velocity versus time graphs. So uh, I want to go through um, one more velocity versus time graph just to make sure that you guys are good with these, because this is going to be on your uh, assessment, and sometimes people get confused with that. So, um, so let me pause a second. All right, so we're going to continue on with uh, this velocity versus time graph. This is actually velocity versus time graph number four if you're looking for the um, worksheet in D2L. So um, the first part is just kind of interpreting this graph and, and describing what's going on. So um, let's let's do that. So it says uh, list the time periods when the object um, will be doing these things. So uh, moves in the positive direction, moves in the negative direction, decreased velocity, increased velocity. It might say uh, slow down, speed up. I changed it to that wording because that's what I use on the test. Uh, move at a constant speed or constant velocity, and then it stopped. So um, one thing I want to point out is this horizontal axis. That is velocity equal to zero. So again, just to reinforce uh, these ideas. Sorry, trying to get to something down here. It's being difficult. There we go. Um, if you're at zero, that means you're stopped here. Um, these are all positive 
values. So that's a positive velocity associated with anything that is above that zero axis. Uh, and this is a negative velocity. So this is uh, velocity equal to zero. Okay, so I think that is always important to look at that and make sure that you're uh, understanding that. So moves in the positive direction, um, that's any time you have a positive velocity, that's what you look for. So positive velocities, um, and I'm going to highlight it here in, in red. So that those are all positive velocities going from there to there. This is a positive velocity. These are all positive velocities along that section. So I need the time interval from this point to this point. So the answer would be here from 4 uh, to 11 seconds. So that is the positive uh, section of the graph. Um, moving in the negative direction is just the reverse, so uh, anything that has a negative value, so values that are below the zero, um, so we can write those out. Uh, so I would say it's zero to four seconds. Let me change this up, make it a little easier. Zero to four seconds, that's not good. Let me try to do something else here to four seconds. Yep, that's better. Uh, and then it looks like 11 to 15 uh, seconds. So both of those time intervals uh, are good for hopefully this doesn't crash out. Um, are good for what we need. There we go. So that's going to be zero, zero to four and uh, 11 to 15. Decreasing velocity, increasing velocity, that's where we talked about um, how the lines move. So um, if the line moves um, line towards zero, so if you remember your gauge um, on your uh, speedometer, if the line moves towards zero, the number gets smaller. That means you're decreasing your velocity. So um, that occurs at the times when the line is going towards zero. So if you remember that gauge example that I did before, that's fine. So um, this line here, I'm trying to make it so that it has an arrow tip. There we go. There to there. There you go. That's moving towards zero. That's another section moving towards zero. So um, the time periods that I would say are correct for this one. Oh. Still want to do that. Okay. There we go. So it looks like it is from uh, zero to four seconds of time. It is slowing down or decreasing velocity. Number is getting smaller, line towards zero. And then also from, it looks like, nine to 11 seconds. Um, for increasing velocity. Oops. For increasing velocity, um, it's when the line goes away from zero. Uh, that means the number is going to get bigger for the velocity. Um, and you can look at this on the uh, values on the side, or you can look at it in terms of, again, the line moving uh, away from zero. So if we do the lines away from zero, let me try to change this up. Um, I'll look at a different color here. So this line here is moving away from zero, and uh, these lines from there to there and there to there uh, are moving away from zero. So they're the values are getting bigger again. So um, if we write those out, uh, it looks like that's from four to seven seconds, uh, and then 11 to 14. It doesn't stay constant from 11 to 14. It goes 11 to 12 and then 12 to 14, but um, they are always getting bigger over that time period. Okay, um, moving with a constant speed. Moving with a constant speed is where um, the number is unchanged, so it doesn't go forward or away from zero. Uh, so those would be uh, times that it's like a horizontal line. So that's going to be seven to nine. Uh, and 
uh, 14 to 15. 14 to 15 kind of hides there, so you might have seen that one, but be careful, it's there. So uh, unchanged line, this line up here at the top, and this line down here at the bottom. Stopped uh, can be a little confusing, so let's let's talk through that one. Uh, when you're stopped, the velocity is equal to zero. So when it's crossing over that uh, horizontal x-axis on your graph, that's what you want. So it would be 4 and uh, 11 seconds. So those are the time periods for those. Uh, on the next graph, we're going to, or in the next part, we're going to look at um, the, sorry, the uh, accelerations with that. So uh, let me scroll down a little bit here. So for the accelerations, um, I remember accelerations are just slopes. So you're going to calculate the slope of the line. Again, be careful with um, positive or negative. So the slow line on a position, or I'm sorry, velocity versus time graph, that's what the acceleration is. So uh, I'm going to try to write this out. So we're going to go up and then over. So this is a positive slope. So it goes from, it looks like 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 8. I'll call that position. And this position equal to 0, or velocity equals 0. And that's 4 seconds of time. So it's uh, gains 8. And this is 4 so it'd be a plus eight. Meters per second. Divided by four seconds. Which is a positive two. Meters per second. So um, that is the, the first time. I'll, I'll do a couple of them and then we'll, we'll kind of uh, just get the answers to some as well. So four to seven um, is the next part here. So it gains goes from 0 up to 12, so that's a plus 12. And from 4 to 7 seconds, that's going to be 3 across, 3 seconds of time. Uh, so this is gain 12 meters per second. And we're dividing that by 3 seconds. So that one's going to be a positive 4. Um, this is meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. Again, a positive slope means going up and to the right. The next one is a horizontal line, so there's no slope, so that's going to be zero. Whoops, meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Uh, the next one that's zero is 14 to 15, so I'll do that one again. So that's zero as well. So 14, 15. Uh, 7 to the 9, those are both uh, zeros. Uh, from 9 to 12, it drops. So that's a negative, negative 12. Oh, we're doing to 12. Sorry, I did. To, so it goes all the way down to that point. There we go. It goes over. So uh, it's actually not negative 12. 9 to 12 seconds, it drops. This position up here is positive 12. This position down here is negative 6. So that's a drop of 18. So that's a lot, negative 18 uh, meters per second. And we're going to divide that by the amount of time that goes by, which is 3 seconds. So negative 18 divided by 3 is a negative 6 uh, meters per second squared. We could have broken it up into like 9 uh, until um, 11 and then 11 to 12, but it's all the same line, so they all have the same slope. Uh, finally, uh, 12 to 14, uh, it drops from 6 down to 10, so that's a minus 4 uh, meters per second, and we're going to divide that by uh, 2 seconds of time, so that's a negative 2 meters per second squared. So those are all the accelerations that you would have uh, for that uh, problem. Uh, let me erase all the ink and start over on the last one. All right, so the last section uh, that we're about to try to calculate is the displacement for each of these time intervals. So for the displacements, um, you got to find the areas between the um, horizontal line and the or the line and the horizontal x-axis. So uh, I'm going to use the uh, crayon feature and sort of color in some shapes. So the first one I'm going to do uh, is from 0 to 4. So uh, it's kind of that purplish triangle that we're figuring out. So for a triangle, uh, I'm going to try to type to make it a little uh, cleaner to see. So 
that's our, there we go. Um, so uh, the dimensions of that triangle would be one half. The base is four seconds and the height is a negative, um, negative eight uh, meters per second. And let me shrink that so it fits a little bit better. So if I do that math, half of four is two, two times negative eight is a negative 16 meters. So um, that is your answer for the first one. From four to seven, Uh, we need to look at um, the area in this section. So that's seven seconds to four, so this orange triangle. So it's another triangle calculation. So should be okay with that. So from four to seven, getting over to that spot, it's one half. Uh, the base from 4 to 7 is 3 seconds of time. And um, the height of that triangle is 12, positive 12 meters per second. So if you multiply that out, uh, half of 12 is 6. 6 times 3 is a positive 18 meters. So again, you got a positive displacement uh, because you have a... Um, positive velocity. Uh, for the last section here uh, that we're going to see this um, 7 to 9, uh, we can color that in. So I'll make a green rectangle here and we're trying to find the area of that rectangle. So all that shaded in space. So if we do that, It's just going to be base times height. So the base is uh, 2 seconds because 7 to 9 is 2 seconds of time, and the height is a positive 12 meters per second. So if you multiply that out, you get 24 meters, and it's positive. Try to make this fit. There we go. Good. Um, so we've gotten those first three sections. The last couple sections, um, it's really just repeating that kind of work over again. So from 9 to 11 seconds, uh, it's going to be another triangle, one half. Uh, the base is 2 seconds, and the height is still positive 12. Uh, so that's going to get you a positive 12. And that is this section that we're looking at here, that triangle. Um, so that's positive 12 meters. Almost done, guys. A couple more. Um, this next one is the one that is a little bit tricky. So for 11 seconds, you actually have a couple things going on. Um, so for 11 seconds, let me color it in. Uh, I'll use this brownish color. So um, from here, uh, from 11 or 11 to 12, isn't bad. 11 to 12 is okay. It's just a triangle again. 12 to 13 was the one that I was thinking it was. We were on, but we're not there yet. So, um, so we're 11 to 12. Oops. It's one half. Uh, the base is one second of time, and the height is a negative six meters per second. So um, that just gets you uh, negative three meters. All right, so 12 to 14, that's the one that's uh, a little bit tougher. So let me give you a little space here. Uh, so 12 to 13, uh, coloring that in. Uh, so I'll put it in black here. So um, 12 to 13, you get a shape that is not 12 to 14, you get a shape that is not your typical shape. Um, so this isn't a triangle or rectangle. It's actually a trapezoid. Um, I don't know the formula of a trapezoid, but it looks like it's a rectangle and a triangle. So there's a triangle here that I'm shading in, uh, and then there's a rectangle above it. So really, you just have to 
um, divided up into those two parts. So you got that triangle and you got this rectangle. We're going to add those uh, areas together. So um, to do that, uh, let's go ahead and do the rectangle first because that's the easier part. Uh, Twelve to fourteen is two seconds of time, and it's got that height of that box is a negative six uh, meters per second. So that's going to be a negative twelve meters. For coming over. For the other part, it's a triangle, so it's one half. The base is still two seconds because that's the same width that it had before, but this time it's going from six to ten, so it's a negative four uh, meters per second. So when you multiply that out, you just get a negative four. And then the total if you add those together, if you add the twelve and the negative four and negative twelve together, you get a negative sixteen meter. So that is the area in black there. Um, finally, there is one more section uh, that we could do, which is 14 to 15. So again, just to be consistent and try to make sure we get through all of it. Um, if we color this in, I'm back to purple. That's a nice rectangle. So again, it's pretty basic. Um, so it's 1 by negative 10, which is just going to be negative 10. So um, move this down so you can see it. There you go. So it'd be one uh, second times uh, negative 10 uh, meters per second, which is just equal to a negative 10 meters. Okay, so um, not sure what happened there, but that's it. That's the end of this uh, lesson. So hopefully uh, that was helpful. Have a good one. Be well.